So I want those who listen to these Shurim to understand that there is a backstory to this. And this is Baruch Fleischmann. You're listening to the Tikkun Elevator call out. Is it an act backstory of a people who are, let's say, close to 4,000 years old? We can't, we can't even begin to think about what it was like a thousand years ago, which we're looking at, we're reading that. We have some reference to that because we're descended from people, let's say, from Europeans a thousand years ago. But what was like 4,000 years ago? So we have a Torah and the Bible. And the Bible tells us about the story of the sons of Abraham. That was Isaac and Ishmael became, according to the rabbis, the Arabs. And there was Jacob and Esau. Esau is the word Esav, like already made. Now, 2,000 years later, there was a tremendous problems between these brothers. So what we're really looking at here is 3,000 some odd years later, the, uh, the maturation of the fight between particularly Esau at this time and Jacob. Jacob, the man of tents, the man of God, the man who wants a spiritual life living in this world. And Esau, who doesn't believe in that, and basically believes in the things he could build with his hands. And the rabbi said 2,000 years ago, when the Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud, talking about the time of the destruction of the temple in the year approximately 72 of the current era, he said that Esau, who Romi, the rabbis say Esau is Rome. Rome, our brother, became Esau. And here we are, destroyed in the year 72, destroyed by the Romans, all really because of infighting amongst ourselves. We actually were could not be beaten by the Romans, but we beat ourselves, which is always a, a possibility. And we were then transported to Rome and to other places uh, as slaves. That was was left of us. Many of us were transported. This group eventually became the Jews of, uh, we, according to Dr. Henry Abramson, the Jews of Ashkenaz. So he says that these people remained in their faith because the faith is very powerful and the way of life of Jews is very, very powerful as well. You have to realize that if you have, let's say they expelled 12 families, well, it, it means that perhaps you had someone who had a banking business and he was lending money to, to, uh, to the privileged who are living excessive lifestyles and making money as they're going on. But he also had clerks. They had to have someone who could uh, ritually slaughter animals according to Jewish law. And if somebody, dif different kinds of people and different kinds of jobs had to go along with the community. We had to have a bathhouse. We have to have certain things that go along with in synagogue. So all of these things, we travel with them as our God, as we thinking, as our God is with us wherever we go. But you're now in the land of our brother Asaph who hates us and his sworn enemy. And he became not just Rome, he became the Roman church. And Romans ceased to uh, exist in the state of overt conquest by a, uh, what would you say, a an, an idol-worshipping uh, country, it became Christian. But you see that the Christians have no tolerance, besides the fact that the nature of, of Asaf is, is violence. Uh, and it's no wonder that the Jews who are in his midst because he needs the Jews uh, get murdered and get massacred. So here we have some of this idea. So we have here the Jews are finally destroyed the Jewish community of France. So Jews are kicked out, they're gone, and they're rid of the Jews who never retain, really regain until the time of Napoleon any kind of status in that country. The beginning of Jewish settlement in Poland, that's where we're going right now. Because after you have to understand that the northern plain of Europe is flat all the way from the northern part of France into Russia. It's possible to travel along that road. And of course, many wars were fought about that road. Even the, the most recent one, the great one, was the World War II. Okay, 
it says the beginning of Jewish settlement in Poland. So we start moving west, and Poland is flat. The northern part of uh, Poland is completely flat. It's easy for those tanks to roll through it, which the Germans did. He said it was only in the 13th centuries that the Jews of Poland began to enjoy privileges. Now, what's a privilege? Although there is evidence of Jews in Poland as an earlier period, in 1264, King Boleslav V, the pious of Kaliz, granted the Jews privileges, being influenced by those granted them by the emperors of Germany. Now, at that time, Germany, until 1870 of our count, our current count, Germany was a, was a conglomeration of many different states. The first privilege was to ensure protection against blood libels. I get that one. That they would say that the Jews killed a child to take the blood and put it in their matzahs, which were right now in the middle of the holiday of Pesach, which is matzahs are... <laughs> Jews are not allowed to eat any kind of blood, animal live or any other, but here this was a powerful tool. It also recognized the status of the Jews as the servi kamarei. What does that mean? Servants of the royal chamber. In 1334, Casimir III, the great, the great, conferred privileges upon the Jews of Poland, ratifying these privileges in 1336 for other parts of his kingdom. Lesser Poland, which is really western Galicia, uh, with Krakow at its capital, and Red Russia, which is Ruthenia, eastern Galicia with Lvov in its capital. After the unification of Poland, and Lithuania in 1386, Poland and Lithuania were in a confederation. That's really areas, again, across this great plain uh, between Poland and Lithuania. Uh, Grand Duke uh, uh, Vitold granted the same privileges in Lithuania. So now here is places that Jews could go, and they won't be murdered because apparently they killed some child uh, and to use their blood. I mean, it's just a, what a terrible lie that is to tell, but they told it over and over and over again. In the 14th and 15th centuries, he says, many Jews refugees gestures from German, Germany, which we've, we, we've have described the massacres that took place in these place, these, this place. So Germany is right next to Poland. So they try, arrived in Poland. The Polish nobles and townsmen wanted to expel the Jews, and consequently, during the reign of Vladislaus, of Vladislaw, it says, the second, he says in 1386 to 1434, the Jews were persecuted. A blood libel now, in the year 1399 in Poznan, resulted in the massacre of the Jews and the, looking, and the looting of their neighborhood. In 1407, there was an anti-Jewish outbreak in Krakow by the students of the university founded in the year 1400. There is little information about early Jewish communities in Lithuania. The important centers were Brest, Litovsk, Troki, Grodno, and perhaps Lutsk. So in my family, we have people who came from Lutsk and Grodno, both of those places. In Volinia, that's where Lutsk is located, the Jewish community of Ludmir, Vladimir in Volinia, was already known in the 13th century, so that's in the 1200. Volinia was annexed to Lithuania in 1336. Many Lithuanian Jews were farmers, farmers, but the nobles from time to time attempted to drive them off the land. Slowly, Jewish urban settlement developed with Jews engaged in operating lease concessions, an activity that in due course extended over all of Poland, Lithuania, and the Ukraine. Now, what are lease, lease concessions? Is, is that the Jews uh, would lease a tavern. They would have the right to sell liquor. The, the, the Jews would be landlords or a landlord's agents uh, over land required to produce a certain amount. The Jews were tax collectors, or the Jews manned uh, tolls. In 1441, Casimir IV, Jagiellon, 
recognized the Karaite community, granting them equal rights with Christians. So Karaites is a branch of Judaism. We, this was actually discussed in an earlier, uh, in an earlier Chaim Barnard Shear. The expulsion of the Jews from Spain in 1492 also had repercussions in Poland and Lithuania. And in 1495, the Jews were expelled from Lithuania and Krakow. However, they were allowed to reside in Kazimierz, which is a suburb of Krakow. Now, let's see if we have a draw, some drawing over here, some pictorial. Like the way I knocked that over there. So, let's try to bring it back. Okay. So, let's get back up over here. A little bit too high. So he says like this, he says, this is a, a map of Eastern Europe. So this would be today uh, Austria, Austria-Hungary, Bohemia, Moravia, some of these other areas. And this is actual Hungary. This is, I guess, the, a lot of Jews lived in these areas. Then, of course, we have Poland and then Lithuania. All of this is a part of the Northern Plain. Bohemia and Moravia is a more mountainous area. I'm not sure exactly what it looks like. Here we have Grudno. So let's come down and let's start to take a look at some of these different things that we lived through. Number one, I'm looking for number one. Two, there's a two. Here's number one. The beginning of the 12th century, following persecutions of Crusades, now you're off the path of the Crusaders. Many Jews, many Jews flee Germany for Poland. That's in the beginning of the 12th century. That's the 1100s. From there, number two. Now here we have a line drawing towards Krakow. End of the 12th century. Mitislav, Prince of Krakow poses heavy fine on perpetrators of violence against Jews. Dangerous place. Number three. 1264. Boleslav of Kaliz grants privileges to Jews of his kingdom. Here is Kaliz. Number four, in the year 1334, Casimir III the Great renews privileges to Polish Jewry. 1364, privileges extended to Lesser Little Poland and Red Russia. Now exactly, I don't know if we have, here's Red Russia here on the map. And it's near uh, Komenitz Podolsky, some of my family came from there. And uh, some of these other towns, Dubno, some that I recognize, Krosno. Okay, all of this area, that's Red Russia. Extended the period into, into that area as well. Let's see, I think that was number four. Let me find number four again, where it go? A little, little Poland. Now, there's also two different Polands. I don't know, it doesn't say. Here's Little Poland down here, which is the southern part of uh, Poland. Galicia. So then let's go to number five. Where's number five? Number five. 1388. After unification of Poland and Lithuania, that, that takes place in 1386, Duke Vitold grants privileges to Jews of Lithuania. So you have here now Jews as early as the end of the 14th century in Lithuania. Well, Lithuania, you see, in the map is really a big place, not the, just the Baltic state. It does move up to the Baltics, to this area as well. But here's Vilna. And there's another big city called Kovna, which is not far. And then the area up above, which is Latvia and Estonia, all of that was Lithuania. So Lithuania was a big piece of land very arable land and uh let's see what else we have to say that was number five let's see number six in 1399 there's a blood libel 
Jews accused of stealing the host. Now, once again, I, I really should look it up, but I'm not sure what the host means. So it just seems like uh, I, I just don't know. Number six. Now, here, let's go to number seven. And, of course, you know, that leads to massacres. Stealing the host leads to this. Everybody gets aggravated. Now, part of the, the trick here is, is you have a small group of people ruling over a, a large group of people. So first they bring in Jews who are persecuted everywhere in Christian Europe and uh, set them up as I intermediaries. So it's the Jew that the serf has to deal with. It's the Jew that uh, is serving the alcohol to people who are highly alcoholic to begin with. So that's what they did, and they made a lot of money off it. This was a good system as long as it lasted. We'll see how long it lasts. So he said that was number six, I think, which was over here. The blood libel. Let's see if we got a seven here somewhere. There's an eight. So this has to be a seven. Well, we'll try a little harder. So we'll do number eight first. And let's see, one more look. I have so much trouble. Okay. In the year 1407 in Krakow. Now, look what's happening on the campuses in the United States today. University students massacre Jews. Krakow, 1407. Now, back up to number eight, and that's going to be it for this. Casimir IV, Jagelian, grants Karaites autonomy in this city called Troki here, near Vilna, the Lithuania. Okay, well, that's what I could tell you. This is a moving along. The Jews somehow survive, and uh, we're here to talk about it. This is Bar Fleischman. You're listening to the Deacon Elevator Polo.